Welcome to Roda, dear audience. This is not exactly Ross Bay area because we're not in fucking Canada. But it's as close as we can get to this somewhat gothic, feral feeling cemetery. And here I have a gentleman of multi talent, Sunny Uninen, also known as Albert Witchfinder. Man of many skill sets, man of many projects, too many bands. Welcome to Rauta. How are you enjoying this um, August 2021 summer? Well, I see. like I like the fact that summer is slowly going away. You, this, this was interesting summer, but um, I'm, I'm more of this kind of weather. A rainy person. Not always. But it has its place and meaning for you. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I like I like to be inside reading book, being you know, just chilling out. I'm, I'm not a beach person. This is kind of a big sense. Of <laughs> As surprise, a rock, surprise. We're, we're at the graveyard. Uh, <laughs> talking of which, you select this very place because it has kind of a, a personal experience, personal meaning to you regarding your uh, one of the most famous bands for you, River and Bizarre. Why this place above all the others? It was before River and Bizarre. It was when I was... Uh, I was maybe six, seven years old. I started to feel some kind of connection to graveyards. It, it wasn't because of gothic or metal or anything. It was actually at those times I was more into Kim Wilde or a Human Leap. But I, uh, I found some kind of solace in, in graveyards, and I, I, I like the um, aesthetics. I, I remember that my uh, mother's mother. I call her mum. It sounds stupid, but mum. And uh, she always took me to graveyards and to see some relatives' graves or something. I don't remember that, but I remember the smells and the feeling. I, I seriously think that I have some kind of necrophilic urge. But nothing really like, let's roll up the sleeves and pick up, pick up someone. Yeah. No, I haven't done that. But it's kind of intriguing. With with one with one guy from one very famous English doom metal band, we had planned to do that, and we were planning to do it in England. I don't want to mention any names, obviously, for obvious reasons. <laughs> but, obviously, but we we were planning that. And then, then a bit later, I was having some good time with Electric Wizard people. And I, they, they are known for very extreme pleasures and extreme music. But I, I started to talk about this plan and they said, you are sick. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's because of English ladies. No offense, but maybe. <laughs> and, and it just has American ladies. All right. Uh, but this, <laughs> this all, all goes back to my original idea. To talk about your past and how these kind of started unfolding and how your career started, well, going on its own course. So you mentioned that your early walks in the graveyard kind of uh, pick your some kind of uh, feelings inside your yes, brain or something yes. like that. What is your first memory related to metal in the game? Uh, okay, yeah, this is kind of easy. First ever metal. That was tape. That time when people still bought tape. Was Kiss Animalize. Around which year this was? 90, 90, 90, 84 when it came out. Or 90, 85. I think it was 84. But um, then, then I heard Iron Maiden, Accept, uh, Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin. Zeus Mappila had this program, one program. It wasn't like every week. It was one program. Radio program. Radio program where, where he played the most important metal songs. And this was time before trash metal kind of existed, uh, at least in Lohia. Yeah. I didn't know about trash metal. Lohia, smaller city. Smaller city. But it, it, this was 80, 85, so there wasn't much. Of course, we now know that death, ex yeah. death that possessed existed. Yeah. But we didn't have that. Yeah, yeah. Obviously. So, so I to me, metal was the purple Uriah he Black Sabbath. Then I heard Venom, and Venom, black metal song, the song, and uh, black metal song, and then Born Again of Black Sabbath. 
that was my first step into the what I call kind of extreme world, disturbing the priest. And then, then I heard Witch for the General's Friends of Hell, the song. And these Venom Black Sabbath Born Again album, Witch for the General's Friends of Hell. This was where I started to understand that these earlier experiences in graveyards, it came together. When did you realize that all these tombstones and graves and these kind of, uh, I don't know if these are exactly gothic uh, gates and fences, but they were very much kind of a phenomenal thing, especially in doom metal and traditional heavy metal. When did it all make sense to you? To, to me, this, this kind of necrophiliac world came with, with Born Again, with King Diamond, with, uh, with Venom. Uh, but at that time, most of metal bands didn't use this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't like every band has. Which for the general photo in Metal Killers 2, Gatefold album of, of metal, you know, metal compilation. And they were in cemetery with these naked, <laughs> bare naked ladies. And um, then I understood that I'm not alone in this thinking. But when I started to uh, kind of find what doom metal is about, this was much later. This is this was in '93. Mm -hmm. Then I understood that there existed this world that, that there are some other people who think the same way. At that time, I had been already listening to Bauhaus and like real gothic bands, mm -hmm. and I. But even Bauhaus never were in, they weren't in graveyards. Yeah. But in my mind, that all came together. I started to feel that there is some kind of connection with the music that I'm listening and, and this urge that I have, and also people who are dead beneath the ground. Yeah, that thinking, that thinking um, was with me uh, already in '92 or '93. I, I always wanted to hang around in Trader. but that was something that I didn't match with the music in the first place. But then, when uh, maybe it was '93, I think I finally got Cathedral's first album, which already came two years earlier, mm -hmm. and they are in Trader. And that kind of connected in my mind that that the feelings that I have are not just mine. And then when I started uh, Reverend Bizarre, it was very clear that we will live in that world. But I didn't talk to other guys about it. It, just, it was just my idea. Some kind of... Uh, this has something to do with my father's death. And, and already when... When he was very ill, I found this, as I said, solace. I found this peace being alone in Korea. Without people around. I, 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 I wasn't hanging around with people. The, the only times that I got some, you know, girl who wanted to kiss me, I always took them to care of Kratos. Was that your test, like? No, you're not no. for match for me. No, 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 no. I'll it, just it, kidding, anyway. No, no, it, it was just that. That was the only place where I felt some kind of safety. I did. I mean, I don't want to this sound wrong, but it, the safety was taken out of my home mm -hmm. because of the disease of my father, that that he died, and the sorrow of my mother, and then my sister got ill, and I didn't have any safety. But okay. for some reason, these early memories of graveyards when I was six or seven. I gave back. I needed to come back to graveyards and and uh, to kind of reconnect with the peace. Yes, and reconnect with uh, the idea that I'm alone, but I'm I'm with you know that everyone here is a story. So I didn't I, I didn't feel alone. To me, all these stones and in Lohi of the or, or the old graveyard, all of those stones were stories and memories of people. I didn't know that, but I never felt alone. I felt that I'm with... And there was a time in lawyer because I got punched in the head all the time. 
you know, these, uh, I don't know the English word for pillurali people. Okay, yeah. Pussy, yeah. pussy tribe people. <laughs> and the, these guys didn't like me too much. I don't know why. Maybe I know why, but I don't, I, I'm a, I can't be sure. But I, there was time when the only place where I liked Lohia people was Australia, because they are all dead. Nobody is bothering you, asking stupid no, questions. No, no, no. And there were there were times. These these were times before school shootings. I sometimes felt that I I, you know, I would like to end many lives. I got over that, thank God. But there were times when when I felt that. I want to hang around in graveyards because these people are already dead. Exactly. Now, I gotta say, I have a kind of a story to uh, tell, which is a little bit different, obviously. But also, when you mentioned seeing all these uh, these graves and feeling the kind of solace, like I, I remember the times when, especially doom metal bands, but also heavy metal bands, even some death metal bands, like Entomb, yes, these, yes, these graveyard With images. Crosses. Exactly. But I was bothered with the very fact because as an early teenager, well, kind of a late teenager, in fact, yes. uh, I had this like really uh, anti-Christian passion. And why they have process. Yeah, and I was like, how on earth these guys who are very much, you know, uh, doing the message of metal music yes. and kind of anti whatever God or religion is mm. out there, why are they hanging out there? And I didn't even figure out that it was all about this kind of a solace for one reason and the other that all the people are dead so it's kind of like makes sense but i had a kind of a struggle to get over it like are these a christian people doing yeah, yeah, this or, yeah. or not and uh, all that <clears throat> so at which time it started to click for you or did it bother you in the first place well to me crosses well from very very early on i understood that crosses uh, object of torture and death. Mm -hmm. Jesus and the old before Jesus, they they you know they crucified people. people yeah. yeah, to me it was always kind of funny that I mean I didn't go to church. My family wasn't religious. Religious, but it, with school we had to go to church. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it's mandatory. In yeah, Finland. yeah, it's mandatory in Finland. If you are not one of these, uh, you know, uh, atheists. Yeah. Groups. I, 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 I don't know if it's even 1980s if it was yeah, possible. Yeah, in the early on it wasn't. In the early times it wasn't. And I always found that interesting that they, this is a church or religion that uh, worships a man being tortured. And punished and all and that. Punished. And punished. Uh, I mean, I don't have any problems with Jesus. I, yeah. I, I don't even want to start talking about did he exist i think he yeah. existed if, if you say it didn't i don't matter it doesn't matter to me some of those things that he said i'm i mean it's okay to me yeah but they fucking crucified him exactly and uh when i go to cemetery and they have actually now they don't have any crosses here not, not too many yeah. but, but cross to me and and why i have these fucking tattoos it, it's symbol of death exactly and already when I was in, um, what is Alaska? Oh, you mean the elementary well, school? Elementary lower school, classes, yeah. lower classes. Lower classes. Lower classes. <laughs> like, ah. But, but you mean, I, I yeah. started listening to heavy metal in 84. Yeah. And I was on the second grade. Yeah. And I found Venom at those times. I mean, I wasn't any specialist. I didn't, I only had few. Every, every time that I got some money, I bought records. And uh, there was time that I didn't uh, dare to buy. Abigail was at that moment the King Diamond album that came out. Mm -hmm. I didn't dare to buy it. Too scary. I thought that something, because we had this illness in our family, I thought that something really bad would know, come to our family. Like a curse. Curse. But then when father became more ill and ill, and I was that there is no easy way out here. Then I bought the eye. Which was, I think, the, there was something, there was, uh, there was some album in between. No, 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 no Kingdom, Kingdom, oh, Kingdom uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Sorry, yeah. Conspiracy, Conspiracy, okay. which is actually yeah. now my favorite yeah. Kingdom. But the eye I bought and I, I, I thought that I don't fucking care anymore. Yeah. 
and I became, I started to order books from Kukunor in Tambe, yeah, occult books, and I, I, and Satanist books, and I became Satanist very early on. I'm not Satanist anymore, but I, well, actually now I'm, I'm more like devil worshipper, but not in the, you know, we can talk about this later. But, yeah. Uh, I started to buy these books and I was so angry towards the whole world and towards if God existed, I, I, I mean, I was in war with him because of what happened to our family, mm -hmm. because we didn't deserve it in my thinking. Yeah, and, uh, it's not like allowing God's acts to cause no, pain and no. illness. Because we have a very nice little family, we didn't have any... My parents didn't drink alcohol, they didn't smoke tobacco, but we didn't have any of usual vices and we didn't have any problems and then somebody kind of hits everything down ramps it down at you but um uh, i became some kind of satanist and at that time these crosses as you say in tomb the fa famous picture i never took that at all as christian i only took that as they are standing in front of object of torture. It was just torture. And we had this uh, very early band in the 80s, which was actually first called Stop Pop. Okay. <laughs> Not a very cool name. That was a very cool name. But then came what was yeah. the first album. And we became SOPO, which doesn't mean anything. But we were... Uh, seven or eight exactly and we had a song called jesus christ son of satan which i later took to the the name i took the title i took to spiritual name. much later much later but it's good. But that, that it i had hard. that when i was like this yeah and we had the we had lesbo virgin i didn't even know what lesbo is Mm -hmm. I just knew that I shouldn't say that. It too. It's kind of a dirty word. <laughs> yeah. It sounds bad. We, yeah, yeah. It. we wanted to use everything it was. We had holiday in the cemetery. Okay, that sounds kind of an interesting that, idea. Yeah, and and uh, I took that too to Spirit of Yeah. When we did the, the last Spirit of album that I did, the second that I did with them, I took these childhood memories and this necrophilia back because I hadn't done that for all of the time. Reverend Bizarre didn't really use these kind of things. Yeah. We so, had we had really nasty things, but we didn't have that 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 kind of warm necrophiliac feeling when I So it was all along in the back of your head it just had to be let out. Yeah. I mean I never I never got rid of that strange emotion that I had. So when did you get get to decide I wanna play in a real band with real instruments and, you know, do something worthwhile, like do gigs, do recordings. When when did this start? It started with KISS. I saw... But I mean, what, which was your first band to actually... The first band was Stop. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but, it, but I, I mean, I have to say this. I mean, we, we were kids. We couldn't play anything. But I decided to become heavy metal bass player and vocalist when I saw KISS. Why bass? Because Gene, Sim because Gene Simmons and, and Mo uh, Lemmy. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, I, I was a fan of Motorhead already back at that time. Okay. The first Motorhead that... Now, I was I had this friend, I, he's still my best friend, Mick Rohan. We, we live neighbor, as neighbors. And we had so little money, because we were little boys that we never bought the same record. So he bought Iron Fist. I bought Born Again. And you would like we, trade? Yeah, and we can listen to them yeah, together. Makes sense. But, but when we heard Iron Fist, it was like that. And I mean, I, I, I was already at that time, I had the final step to me that I knew that I will become bass player and vocalist was what first album. I still think that that first Wasp album is perfect. It is a fucking great album. But at that time, 
I had been into Kiss, and I I actually didn't know why because I didn't like all of the songs. They have kind of a cheesy. They song. have really bad songs, but they also have fucking great songs. But but that was the first band that I knew that you know this is something else than Human League, which I also like. This is something else. And, 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 that, and, and you have to understand that at that time they didn't have the masks anymore. But in Suosiki magazine, they still had those old pictures. Yeah. So when I listened to Animalize, I thought that they had those fucking cool makeups. Because I, to me, Kiss was that thing. Yeah, especially Gene uh, Simmons with this kind fucking of Fucking great and blood, blood yeah, coming out of He the was mouth. Like, a, like a demon compared fucking to the great. other band. Yeah. I like Ace Freely yep. also, but the other guys <laughs> didn't look so good. Yeah. But then came Wasp, and I heard it early on when it came out. One friend of mine played that to me, and then I understood that this is much more than I have ever heard. It wasn't more than Motorhead, but it was as great. But was the first album, I, then I got it as present, Christmas present. That. That same year that it came out, I got it as prison prison, and it changed everything. I was, it, it, I was blown away, and I still, when I listen to it now, I can still feel that same rebellion and kind of over the top feeling that they had. And at that time, I remember that I decided I will become like Blackie Wallace. Did you? In your own opinion, I am bass player and I'm vocalist. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not like the laws. <laughs> Thank God, maybe now. But <laughs> well, yeah, God being the chosen one. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But about about the music you started making and you had your best. But yeah, was, you, you mean up to stop pop? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, this was in 1991. I became a vocalist of death metal band. But I didn't do any of those songs. I was just vocalist. What is the first real meaningful record you made yourself? I mean, whatever it be, whatever the band. I would say that the first, that was just a rehearsal tape, but that was with this death metal band. Then I understood that these guys really know how to play. And we sounded pretty good. This was in 1992, 1991, 1992. Somewhere there in between. We did one gig, it was pretty good. There was Deceiver from Purple. I know those guys, actually, yeah. They, the only audience was Deceiver and their girlfriends and us and our friends. Yeah. And when we played, there was Deceiver guys and the girlfriends and our friends. And I mean, I'm not proud about this because it, that was bad, you know, me. Bad, bad behavior? Bad behavior, yes. But after we played, all of the Longia people went out. Okay. But I mean, I, Deceiver was great. I liked them. I, I thought that they were fucking cool. But there was no audience at all. There were only us and them. And they came <laughs> They came to play in Longia. For uh, no show people. No show people. We And then... then uh, I mean that the band that I was in was pretty good, but I wasn't ever asked to play again, <laughs> so I was out. Too. So you were moving on then. What, what happened yeah. next? What, what was your? Then next I started before? to do noise score. Why noise score of all styles? I wanted to put as much power into as small moment or piece as possible. I had heard Napalm Death. And I had heard sore throat. Yeah. But I always thought that sore throat had too much kind of a, not as a show, but something like that. It, it wasn't like really serious, but I wanted to do really serious noise in smallest possible amount of time or space. And Void was the drummer. And we, we did our first Tape, and it had more than 1,400 songs. <laughs> and all of those songs had names. We recorded the fucking thing, and it this was the same time that Eino Krön had his, his uh, some kind of a jubileum tour 
I don't remember, was it like that he was 50 years old or something, but that was like a special tour. Kind of an anniversary thing. Anniversary tour. And um, he had the same fucking day he was at Lohia. Yeah? A few, Still a wall, of- few walls. A few walls away. We were playing in uh, this bomb, bomb shell. It's a bomb shell. Bomb, bomb, bomb shelter. Shelter, yeah, yeah. But not bomb shell. Yeah. Bomb shelter, yeah. And uh, we were going to this um, backstage, so to speak. It was huge area. area. And they were there, the Xenophron band. And we were, we need some cable or something. And I went there. And I saw there was toilet, and I saw this guy going to the toilet. And he said that, oh, you are there. And then I heard Enochran's voice, yes, I am here. <laughs> Enochran was there. I mean, I liked Enochran. Yeah, yeah. And we were playing. There was corridor, and then we were playing. And they had this show there in this auditorium. And we started to do. We were very precise. It wasn't like Eno Kant, so that you like now we yeah. play 50 songs. Yeah. We had like. Okay. No, no, no! Kind of like. And, you suffer! Yeah, but was, uh, yeah, but faster. Okay. And we were playing those songs, and um, I thought that everything's going fine. And then I decided to piss to the. Well, how do you call this where you wash your hands? The wash machine? No, no, this. this um, I don't, I don't remember, even remember the Finnish words. Love water. Love water. Love water. Is it that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I pissed to that because I didn't want to bother any other people. Yeah, and no. I, we wanted to continue recording this fucking yeah. record. Then the door opens and the door is here. I'm pissing the same time. And I hear this woman's voice. And he says that, I don't know what the hell you're doing here, but it's... We can hear it there in that fucking Anacron dick. Anacron is singing there, and they hear, ooh, ooh, ooh. and they have been starting to look at the pipes. They thought they couldn't understand that some persons could do that sound. Yeah, and they were like, all the pipes and all the electricity. Where is that? Then, then they, it, it comes from here, and I'm pissing. And there's Thor and this lady is there that, I don't know what you're doing, but you bother fucking in or and kick. And then the door closes and I'm like, Phew. but we continue. Because we were young and we were like rebels. And we did this fucking tape. And then we did more tapes and in 94, we started to have different kind of songs, but at first, it was only these aggressive kind of uh, explosions. Uh, so after this noise core thing, you went eventually back to metal. Uh, why? I mean, if you first made these really super quick and uh, compact songs, yes, and eventually you ended up doing doom metal, slowest is, possible. Music. Yeah, the, the long, lengthy songs. How can it uh, be? Well. Reverend Bizo was side project of this noise pro band. But at that time, we had already done material that became Vigate Split. So yeah. even Koal which was this noise pro band, it had, it had got slowing down, slower, slower, slower. But uh, Reverend Bizarre came in uh, 93, 94 in my mind, and that was because I, I, I found St. Midas and, and, and as I said, Cathedral earlier. And I, I just got obsessed with that music. So it's it's very simple. I was a fan. And then, then because I was already playing music, I decided that I, I would like to try to do something with this music. I didn't have any plans to re- release it or anything. I just, I was a fan. I was obsessed with doom at all. We already have this uh, conversation about, actually, about a year ago with Kimi in a uh, Turku Castle Park. So kind mm. of similar setting and all that stuff, and he explained a lot of the history. But what I what I don't think I really asked him is, mm. why did you think that Reverend Bizarre became such a cult fan, especially after you quit? Well, that's a, that's a large question. I know. Uh, <laughs> well. 
when when I started, when I asked Kimi and and Yuip to join me and uh, try to do something, at that time I already had small but pretty good collection of females. And at that time nobody, I, I didn't know anybody who was into that music. It was very obscure. And that made it more appealing to me. And uh, I, I continued to collect those records. I went to Stockholm to buy them and I, I ordered them and I, I got this collection. And uh, I have to say that when we did Slice of Doom, I, I kind of knew that if there is some other people still on this earth, because even say by this hat, mm -hmm. they quit it in 94 after die hailing. And so there was nothing. I didn't know about Warning or I knew about Electric Wizard, but they were kind of different. I mean, they were huge impact to me and influence to me, but uh, I wanted to do something more pure, even more pure than Electric Wizard had, like who had like psychedelic elements. Yeah. And uh, I knew that if there is someone into Doom Metal, he will like this thing that I do because I did it exactly as I felt that it should be done. And uh, it happened. And then then we uh, continued doing albums and with every every record I wanted to, I was in such frame of mind or state of mind that I wanted to hurt people. And with the uh, hopping of metal, I, I wanted to do an album that nobody would like. And then everybody liked it. And then we <laughs> went on and trust the insects. I wanted to do music that shows people that Doomadol is not just about being slow. My favorite bands like Iron Man, they are not slow. They are sometimes slow, but not all the time. Or uh, with Funny General, you know, obsessed. And, um, then we had this plan to go on and do, do two more albums, but then, then the, all the problems became a bit too much to bear. And you had to once again move on. I had to move on. I, then, then I decided that, okay, we do one more album, which was 120 minutes or something like that. So the crazy <laughs> anyway. And, uh, and, uh, and at that time, Doom it all started to rise. People. People got more knowledge about that style of music. And you could buy them in even in Turku, Helsinki, or Tampere, like big city. Like many places. Many places, yeah. Which wasn't the case in 94. Yeah. And um, I was happy about that. But at the same time, something of that mysticism or, you know, my appeal to that. Started it, to diminish it, in a way. I, was, I mean, I still listen to. Uh, morning of a new day. I still listen to Saint Vitus Trouble. I I love that music. I listen to that every week. I listen to some do, but when these new bands came, I felt that my work is done. I wanted when we started or when I started because I was first alone. Then I asked these guys to join. Uh, my main point was to make people aware of St. Vitus and Pentacram and Whitfield. I already had in my mind the career of music with a fucking noise board. So I, I I didn't have any plan to to become something. I just wanted to play that music and, and spread the word about these bands that I love and I still love. But when when in 2006 when we did the I think it was 2006 when we did the last album or 2007 or something like that I don't remember anymore. it's all on time there I decided that okay I've done my share well then few, few years after that I'm in spirit for it yeah so, kind, of the, <laughs> kind of the same pool I it? had to I had to do that man. But, but I will also, what is worth mentioning, definitely, OP Warlords and, and your other projects, you are also have been doing comics and all that stuff. Yeah, but that, that was earlier. That was yeah, earlier. but I mean, that is way more than just just a guy with a bass and a voice and all that stuff. Okay. So, uh, so how did these things, how did you find time for all these different projects and bands 
Because once you always end something, you always start something new. Yes. So uh, do you have a priority for these things or how, how does it work for well, you? Well, I could, somebody could say that I didn't have a life. So I was working all the time. I need, uh, I've just, so far I've done all the hard work for check for. Mm -hmm. And the, I mean, I was working on, on, on those things, but I never thought about myself as being anything more than that bass player. I do other things, but I, I, I'm not trying to, I don't feel like I'm more than that. I, I am bass player, I'm, I make songs, I arrange them, I produce them, but it doesn't, it's not, it's not what matters. To me, I'm still that guy who saw Blackie Lawless in Hittimittari. I remember the show. Yeah, because That's, we were yeah. all watching the same yeah, fun. Exactly. two channels. Yeah, exactly. When Hittimittari comes, you look at that, yeah, you yeah. watch that. I remember finding a lot of fans. And then, then you see that. that video, I was, oh, oh, this is best thing in life. Exactly. But, but talking about nowadays, uh, for example, uh, today how we agreed to do this interview, it is mm -hmm. because you're recording something. What can you tell about this something that is going to see sunlight? Well, someday? yesterday yesterday we finished, um, I'm doing with Laia second album. Yep. We don't have label behind that, but the first album is now in the factory and it will come out uh, maybe when the rain gets better, you get worse or whatever you think. When, when the autumn comes. And uh, with the like the, the first album is finished and then now now we now we finish the second album. I'm doing Open Warlords album, it will come out with Swart. I'm doing um, double album with only Hanin and all Bronsky mm -hmm. Uh what else I'm doing? I'm doing with Timo Tapio Palmo I'm doing Noise Works. Noise album. Then, then comes few couple two at least two Reverend is are still like reissues or something like that. Then comes Spirit Morris compilation, and I, I mean, I'm working on these now. How do you find time and passion and energy? I don't, I these? don't know if I have that passion, but I still, I just, my father taught me one lesson, and that was, don't. Take a job that you can do well. If you if you say that I'm not, I don't have passion or time to do this well. Don't take it. When I take a job, I do it as well as I can. I don't I don't care about am I tired or do. I mean I don't get paid for these things. I get like this much, but I have to do it. For your, I I feel that. Because the ideas come to me, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of slave. I have to do it. I had them when I was this small. I'm still on the same road. I had those ideas back then, and I have them now. And uh, I couldn't live with these ideas in my mind, and I wouldn't, you know, vomit them out. So is it fair to say you're kind of obsessed with creativity? Yes. I, did, I never wanted that. I never asked for that. Have you ever dreamed of having like, no, I want to be this regular, normal, I, 90, I, dream, jo jokes. I dream about that almost every day. I mean, I'm not interested in sports or I'm not interested in, in anything healthy or normal. I'm interested in, in, in these fucking fucked up things that are inside of my mind. But when I'm at home and I see, you know, people doing their normal jobs, I always feel that I'm a bit lower than them. How? I, I mean, I would. It would be so easy to live. No one's life is easy, but it would be easier to have some job that you do, and then you have like you know your small little things, and then you are into ice hockey or something, and then you, you get you get some pleasure out of little things. Like get your kicks out of kicks normal out stuff. Of, yeah. And uh, I mean, I, I never wanted to be what I am, but I, I had never choice. Any regrets r related to your creativity? No. I mean, I, I have to live what there is. And I'm, I have never done anything that I would feel that 
I did. I mean, as I said, as my father said to me that if you can't take, if you can't do that, don't take that. I everything that I took, I did it as well as it can be done. Even the Whether band. it's a, it's a drawing for some album cover or something. I mean, I when I did those fucking checkbook albums, I I was I was. I stayed up for three days doing that so that I can do the deadlines. Yeah. If I decide to do it, I do it no matter what happens. And and when I'm doing music, like now I did this uh, Lay Isle second session, we did, we we don't have label, but I decided I pay that for myself because it has to be done. And I this is the journey that I'm on. I have to do it. Any genre you haven't yet done, but you will do or want to do? I'm gonna do a uh, new romantic, futuristic synth pop. Have you already? That's got a name? my that's my first love. Do you have a name for it? Mm, no, but I mean, I I could do that with Opie Warlords. Opie Warlords can be everything that is inside my mind. So it's your final. The, the end product. Before. Not 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 necessarily, but it will come at some time because it's well actually actually this second layout album I'm already doing vocals like that, but the, the music is very minimalistic. It's it's not pop music, but the vocals are already almost pop music. Okay. But we have we have the music for the third album already, and that won't have those pop vocals. So. If I do like now, I'm now I'm in the middle of the next OP Worlds album, and it's kind of uh, easier to listen to than the earlier ones. Although Nembutal, to, to my liking, is very easy to listen to, but not to everyone. But if I do an album that is easy to listen, that doesn't mean that I now I'm going to do that for the rest of my life. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm not able. Whenever something goes really well, I have to end it. When Spirit is Born, it was really good, and it's still good, but really good in what I did. I decided that it has to end. I want to end everything when it's in the highest peak. Like uh, end it while you're top of the game. Yes. Like, it's this stupid thing to say, but I think that Emperor did that. Some bands, like can, best. Some, some bands can do that, but may, most of the bands continue and then they have this sad memory. And yeah. I, I think that if you end when you are going down, everything that you did is some, you know, wasted yeah. in some way or soil. That is, that is kind of a funny that you mentioned you don't like sports and all that stuff, but there is a saying in sports, especially uh, with those individual sports that You're which all, I actually admire. Which is that you're only as good as your last, last, whatever thing you did, performance or last fight. Exactly. But before we quit, because we don't want to get too wet and all that stuff. <laughs> I mean, I already feel the flu coming in. Okay. No, jokingly, uh, if you have any one tip that you could give to your younger self, like any word, word to the wise, like hey, something from the past. Here is a ball. Catch it. Okay. Can you figure D out? Something? Don't do those comics because someone will find them at some point. That no one has find them now, but I think that when I'm 50, someone will find them, and then I'm, you know, embarrassed. Don't do them. Just and, and one thing: learn how to uh, tune guitar or bass. When I was young, child, bo little boy, I didn't know that there that you have to tune that. And I was listening to Jimi Hendrix, and I, well, how the, how the hell he can do this? Because I, have, I thought that you just have to find those yeah. sounds there, and uh, learn how to tune and start earlier. Because now I'm, now I'm, now I'm 45. I don't. It's okay, but I, I missed 10 first years. I had all of those ideas for so long time. If I would have started playing really with, you know, precision when I was 15, everything would be easier now. So learn how to tune the instrument. Don't 
draw comics. Just read them. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings me to the very last question. Okay. If you can give yourself now a tip, like you said you're like 45 now, say to your 70 year old version. Yes. So 25 years now, what kind of tip or uh, a line to remember you want to keep to your future self? Fucking okay, great question, because I, I think that I'm gonna continue doing this, what I'm doing right now. Now I'm, now I'm doing what I have to do. Now I have the knowledge to do it just in the way that I want. One tip, at, that, at, at some point, stop drinking. Not yet, but at some point. Some point. When you are uh, 60, stop drinking. And this is our cue to go away or whatever. But yeah, some words to the wise in general. Learn to two new things. I never was good at that. <laughs> I always come late and all that stuff. But you didn't draw comics, did you? Uh, no, I, was, I, I sucked too much. <laughs> I tried to do some characters, but they all sucked. <laughs> okay. But uh, at least I kind of uh, skipped on the drinking already. Okay. So I'm on the good side. <laughs> so, so you are you are me in seventy? Maybe, maybe <laughs> he's gonna look like me in seventy. Anyway, thanks for your I time. I hope, I hope so. <laughs> thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you for. We will thank maybe you very much. someday, few years from now on, maybe in a similar setting, maybe the very same setting, have a uh, part two for this. I'll promise you already that we have too much, too much time, too much talk to this game. Thank so you. meanwhile. Go to check out some of the material mentioned. Go to River and Bizarre. Go to Spirit is Mortis. Opium go Warlords. to Opium Warlords. And maybe even the more. And as we're arising, that, we that might well. do another album. No one knows. Keep your, keep your ears <laughs> and eyes peeled and find those tunes. Rauta going out. Take care. Bye bye. Oh, no, that's it. Thank you.